Good morning, folks. We're going to be doing another live style show this morning. It is Monday morning, March 27th, 2017. It is just before 6.30 a.m. Eastern Time, and we're over here at spaceweathernews.com. Let's scroll down. Let's stay focused here on 171 angstroms. See the big coronal hole in the center of the frame? The bright areas just to the left of that are sunspots, including the bright area uh, on the southern hemisphere just coming over the limb now. You can see there really wasn't much in terms of activity. We're going to watch this through one more time. The coronal hole begins turning towards the limb, and you'll remember those spew out fast solar wind, and we were expecting that to arrive sometime here at Earth as well. Coming back out. These are the uh, X-ray flux charts. This is the six hour, this is the three day. You can see we actually did break up into C-class flaring. At one point yesterday, it was not uh, by any means scary or significant whatsoever, but given the fact that we've been basically riding a baseline and B and A-class range for a while, uh, this certainly represents uh, an uptick. And so when we come to the sun, this was the big sunspot group that we were looking at. Uh, before this is the new sunspot group I said was coming over the limb into view on the south. This is a close-up magnetized view of that large sunspot. You can see the lead is red, negative, blue is positive. Let's come back real fast so you can see the shape. And so what we're looking for is areas where these umbral uh, cores interact. And so we have potential over here, although I don't believe that sunspot is too big. Let's actually zoom in on that here. All right, so we had a little bit of red and blue right there. Let's see if that looks like it could be what that I was looking at. All right, so that actually does look like it. We have some red and blue potential to interact right there. You can see the lead, really no blue anywhere near it. So that's really not where we're uh, be looking for flaring. If we get some development here though, uh, the difference between this umbral field sort of connecting to the front versus connecting to here, if it gets strong enough, could actually cause some solar flaring. We also do have a tiny little sunspot on the uh, on the incoming limb there, although it's nothing significant. The ramp upwards in sunspots, and this is February and March sunspot number, you can see this trough right here. That was that two weeks, basically, of um, of no sunspot count whatsoever, and we are now on our way up. Uh, once we hit the peak, it actually begins a three-day earthquake. Watch the caveat to that being uh, we have to guess when that peak will be because for all we know, a couple days, it'll go back up even more. Well, let's come over to the SDO, uh, the SDO page and take a look at what's going on in 304 angstroms and decided to pull this one because there are a lot of plasma filaments dancing around. You might recall that it's not just the sunspots. Uh, that we've been looking for, but it's the plasma filaments as well. You can see that there are quite a number of them here, but for the most part, they are just active on uh, on the limbs and the far side, and they're not even really ejecting uh, too dangerously. But just wanted to give you a little uh, view of that. If you actually take a look down here where that new sunspot is coming in, we actually are going to see a tiny little flash at the end of the sequence here. Yeah, that was it right up there for... Uh, for one of the little solar flare contributions. So anyway, that's what we're looking for right now. Uh, this coronal hole has basically uh, stopped facing Earth. Sorry, I didn't mean to click that like that. This coronal hole has basically stopped facing Earth and is now turning away towards the limb. We did not see much seismicity. The earthquake drought continues, but uh, in terms of what the solar wind from that uh, coronal hole is doing, let's come down. We have the ACE telemetry on the right, the Discover solar wind telemetry on the left, Again, we're back at spaceweathernews.com right now for those who uh, are new to this and don't recognize where we are. This orange line here, this is the solar wind density. And you can see we had a nice jump upwards from about 2 to 3 protons per cubic centimeter you know, up to about 12, 20, 30. And as that died down or started to come back down, we see the speed and the plasma temperature in purple and green began to come upwards. If we look uh, up here in blue, this is the phi angle of the solar wind. You can see it did some shifting, which means that not only was the density and the temperature and the speed of the solar wind changing, but its magnetic character, its magnetic angle. And up here, this is, uh, to oversimplify, when you have this flat line here in between positive 5 and negative 5, not really a whole lot going on. You start to see bigger spikes, that's more geo uh, geomagnetic activity. And the red one, the BZ, when it tips south, basically into the negative, that's when we could have 
geomagnetic effects. And indeed, you saw that happened upon the impact of this stream. And we are now in our second block of geomagnetic storms. These are three-hour blocks, by the way. Uh, we'll see if that still uh, persists in a few hours when they update it again. For those who have the disaster prediction app, you do know uh, that you got that alert at some point a few hours ago. Uh, once again, first ones to send out that alert. And so what we're going to do to finish up here is come over to windytv.com. This is the color for wind map. I have the pressure overlay on right now. See a low spinning just, uh, just east of the Bahamas there. Probably not going to hit hurricane status, but that is a rare position for a, a storm this time of year. In terms of what's really a story, though, we have this, uh, this low pressure situation developing in the center of the country. As I pull up the rain and snow, you can see that they are sucking in the moisture towards them. Not sure exactly how bad it's going to be tonight, but the threat for severe weather is going to be there. Let me step back a few hours, uh, especially up into the Ohio area. Uh, this is probably going to be rain and, uh, and mostly snow, actually, as you get up into the mountainous areas. Of course, we do uh, have more coming uh, to the B.C. coastline. That'll probably uh, get down into Washington and Oregon as the system moves, but not expecting that one to get down to California like the last couple, at least as we're, we're now into Wednesday here on, on the map. Uh, yeah, really got to get into Thursday before we can see that rain starting to get back into California there, and it's just the northern areas. So let's come back to today, put on pressure, and let's skip across the pond. All right, well, I can tell just by looking at this pressure situation, we've got cold coming uh, to Scandinavia, wrapping around that low right there. But something tells me that these lows are going to be the more interesting ones. Let me pull on the rain and snow. Actually, doesn't look like they do much advancement towards the coastline today. Should be a somewhat lighter day over in Europe. Come back, go down under quickly. Of course, the big story here is Debbie. Uh, hopefully, everyone along here is ready for what's coming uh, because it's not going to miss you. If you pull on the rain and snow, you can see that these lows that are uh, straddling the North Island of New Zealand and up closer to Kermadec, they are producing a good amount of rainfall, mostly offshore for now. We zoom out just a skosh and come back down here. Interesting. All right, so this is the low that yesterday we said was much more noticeable. And let's see if that one's going to get to the South Island of New Zealand by tonight. Unlikely, as we see that push towards Antarctica. That was really interesting. Let's watch that again. So its convergence line was coming up here, but I'm suspecting what's going to happen is as it, as it descends towards Antarctica, Debbie's going to steal the convergence, and it's not going to have access to tropical moisture anymore. Yeah, as you can see that, you see it's pulling from this area here. Most of the precipitable water vapor is getting sucked into Debbie there. This loses its, uh, it loses its fuel, so to speak. And as you can see, the rain and snow, well, it might be snow as it gets down to Antarctica, somewhat diminishes there. Anyway, folks, uh, that's how you look through Windy and uh, spaceweathernews.com. Uh, of course, the way we bring these news to you every morning is via the members at uh, suspiciousobservers.org. Uh, we greatly appreciate your support. We will do this again tomorrow morning, as always. Be safe, everyone.